Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Lord God, we just thank you for your daughter, Aleda, right now. We ask you to come with the power of your Holy Spirit and fill her. Yes. Fill her and empower her with your anointing, Lord. That the words she speaks tonight would come directly from your throne room, Lord, and go directly into our hearts. That they would minister deeply and that they would edify all the souls listening to this tonight. In your most holy name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise be Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you. So let's begin. The Word of God says in the Gospel of Matthew, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Jesus is here today with us in this little discipleship class because we are gathered in his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being here with us. We praise you and we honor you. Amen. So this is the last talk for Living in the Spirit series. It's community. And you can find it on page 65 in your book. So you can start. We're going to start with the, the quote that Father Mark uh, picked out for a community. Community is a sign that love is possible in a materialistic world where people so often either ignore or fight each other. It is a sign that we don't need a lot of money to be happy. In fact, the opposite. This is from the book of Community and Growth by John Bonier. So in the Old Testament, in Genesis, we read about the, the story of the Tower of Babel, Babel. And what happens there, again, they're probably too materialistic. They're in the world. There's a little bit of pride there with the people in their hearts. They want to just uh, reach heaven and be their own gods. So what does God do? God divides and scatters them by making them speak different languages and causing confusion. In the New Testament, we read in Acts 2, Now there were Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. We hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. That was the Pentecost. Their God, the Holy Spirit, comes to unite everyone. They begin speaking in tongues, and everyone can understand each other. They are united again by this amazing love. Thus, this bringing out, bringing about community. So tell the person next to you, love unites us all. Love unites us all. Amen. <laughs> okay, we start with point number one. God, the Holy Spirit, is a communion of love. So we are made in the image of likeness of God, and so we too are called to live in this communion of love. The first time I ever saw a community was uh, with my parents. My parents had uh, done a retreat called Corsillo many years ago, and they just were filled with just so much love for God, and, and uh, they wanted to be part of the community. And I remember I was a little girl, and I remember seeing people come to my house, and they were uh, part of this uh, movement called in Spanish, el Movimiento Familia Cristiano, the movement of Christian families. And they would come together and open the Bible and scriptures and, and pray together, the couples. And of course, the kids, we were all in the background running around and playing and, and stuff. But that was the first time I ever uh, saw a community with my parents. And as I meditated on this, on the Trinity and on the communion of love, I, I started thinking about, well, Jesus, Jesus, he was God. He could have come to this world. He didn't have to come through the Blessed Mother, but he chose to come through the Blessed Mother and have a mother here and uh, St. Joseph as his father. And so they were a family and they were like a little community. 
And so the Lord calls the families also, those who pray together, and be community. So those of you who are married or getting married, so make sure you put God first in your family. And if you have children, make sure you come together and pray together in that little community of your family. I remember a holy, this holy priest um, said one time of, of my parents, he said, a fam he said, uh, a family that prays together stays together. And I thought, wow, he didn't really know my, my parents. But my parents are always getting up, praying together, going to daily mass together. They're always, you know, making sure if there's an emergency in the family, <laughs> my mom gets everybody. My, my dad is like St. Joseph, but my mom gets everybody together. And he's like, we gotta pray the rosary so you can see the kids falling asleep. And, but we're praying the rosary together, whatever happens. We're there together as a family. So a family that prays together stays together. So tell that to your neighbor right now, to the person next to you. A family that prays together stays together. Amen. Amen. Second point. One of the fruits of any renewal in the church is a desire among the faithful for community. Community is a work of the Spirit. And we read about it in Acts 2. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to prayers. All who believed were together and had all things in common. In my life, I, I grew up, I guess, going to Catholic school my whole life. And, uh, but there was a moment, there was one moment when I was going through something difficult and um, my sister and I were invited to a prayer group. There's not only just any prayer group, it was a charismatic women's prayer group. This totally changed my life. I didn't want to miss any meeting. I was there every Monday, and um, I remember I was like the youngest one, and uh, the leaders would you know, teach me whatever, if, whatever, if I had questions, they, they would always be teaching me, but it really changed my life, and I am so grateful for that little prayer group. And I know it still exists, but I was also part of maybe study groups and uh, ministries, and here at the center, you know, I work here, so part of my job is also a ministry. But I still felt a longing, something like the Lord was calling me. I thought maybe he was calling me to the religious life, but that didn't happen, I was discerning that didn't happen, but he was calling me into still a deeper relationship and a community. And um, I found a community, it's a covenant community, it's called the Love Crucified Community. I, I prayed about it and I received several confirmations, one being that I had a picture of the Blessed Virgin that I had never seen anywhere else. And uh, I found in the formation book of my community the same picture. And then I found out that the members of my community have that picture in their homes. So I knew that was a confirmation from the Lord that I was supposed to be in that community. I received another one, but that was one of them. It was beautiful. I knew the Blessed Mother was there. And so in my community, we have a vocation. Our vocation is summed up in Jesus' call. It is to suffer all with him, no longer two, but one, in the sacrifice of love. We are called to be victims of love, to hasten the new Pentecost. And for that, really, it really touched my heart. I just knew I was in the right place at the right time. We live in our own domestic monastery, uniting our little sufferings with those of Jesus on the cross by going daily to the foot of the cross. So that's part of my community and I'll be sharing more with you. And so the question is, where is the Lord calling you? Is he calling you to a community, a prayer group, somewhere? So during this week in your prayer time, ask the Lord, where are you calling me? 
What part of the community, what, what community, what prayer group, where are you calling me, Lord? Point number three. Community is an essential part of the gospel. We are all, we are one body. I'm just beginning in my simple path to union with God. But I can see those that have been in my community, uh, they have such beautiful gifts and they, and they work together. Uh, just, and they're powerful intercessors and it's just beautiful what they're doing. So I'm learning a lot from them and I'm, I'm part of this one body in this little community. I also, as I work here at the Catholic Charismatic Center, we see the members serving here in different ministries according to their gifts. Every member is important and every gift is important. Some of, of you have gifts of teaching, of evangelization, of hospitality, greeting. <laughs> when people serve as one body, the Lord is using your gifts according to your grace and then everything seems to flow at ease. I remember Father Mark saying one time, I guess he was, he was new here, he just, he didn't know how things sometimes, uh, would, how can you say, uh, where he, he would go somewhere and everything was already done. And so, but he didn't know people, you know, in the background, everybody was doing uh, what they were supposed to do, they had their gifts. And so it made things easier for him. So tell the person next to you, we are one body. Amen, amen. Point number four. Authentic Christian community is a witness. It converts hearts. You will be able to, to give your testimony when and be able to convert hearts, but you will, your hearts will also continue to be transformed and converted. The Word of God says, this is how all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. When you're in a community, you, you just, you'll meet people and you'll have things in common, it's going to be different. You'll, you'll have wonderful friends and, uh, and sisters for life and brothers for life. It's, it's, it's a beautiful place uh, because you know God is there and, and it's different. Your life is different. So when you enter community also, you enter into an ocean of love. And this ocean of love is also a consuming fire. And so this fire is also going to purify you and others around you. Tell the person next to you, get ready to be purified. Get ready. <laughs> okay, let me explain. Father Francis Frankovich told me that Father Bob Bedard, the founder of the Companions of the Cross community, said that a community will grind you. Are you ready to be grinded? <laughs> yeah. In a community, okay, there's a lot of love, but the Lord knows. He knows that there's a lot of work to be done in our hearts, and he knows in your heart there might be a little bit of anger or resentment, or there might be just some sadness or fear, or you might still have some pride, or there might be some attachment or disobedience. So the Lord knows that. He knows what's in your heart. And so our ways are not God's way. You know, God's ways. God's ways are way, like, higher. Like, the way we think is not the way God is thinking. He's thinking at a much higher level. So sometimes you might be thinking, I'm being attacked, or... Somebody like disappoints you, you get annoyed, annoyed, or you're annoying somebody else. But in a way, it's a blessing. If you're living in the Spirit, you have to be communicating with the Lord constantly and asking the Lord, okay, Lord, what's going on? I, I'm 
freaking out here. <laughs> Show me, tell me, like, why is this happening? And the Lord will show you. You have to be still. And again, listen to his voice. We've been learning. You listen to his voice. And he will show you. Because he wants to heal that area in your heart. He wants to deliver you from certain lies of the enemies. Something that happened maybe in the past. If something, I've heard people say, oh, somebody put something on the table. And that wasn't supposed to be on the table. I was like, well, why did that bother you? You need to go to the Lord. You can't just explode or anything. You have to go to the Lord and tell him, Lord, why did that bother me? Maybe something happened to you when you were little with your parents or something, you know, and you still need some kind of healing there, something uh, that the Lord is, is, is doing. He knows. So he's allowing that because he wants to heal you and deliver you from whatever, and he's purifying you. He wants to get you to a high level. He wants you to fly. He doesn't want you to stay at a certain level. He, if you have a stony heart, you're going to be stuck below. But if you start letting go of those areas and start healing those wounds, you're going to fly higher and higher and higher. Amen? Amen. Amen? So get ready. If you're just starting to be purified, and um, in my community, we're called to go to the cross daily, and we ask, we ask for the Lord for the gift of self-knowledge and knowledge of God and for true repentance. So daily, this is something we do daily. Everybody should do daily. You won't stop until you get to heaven. So daily, it's a process, and with the Lord's grace, you can do it. And again, you've got to be living in the Spirit. And everything that you've been learning, you must continue to do on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Number five. We need to reach a degree of independence before we can truly become interdependent. Otherwise, we become codependent. Now, what does this mean? Okay, I'm going to... My experience... When I met the, fa uh, the father of uh, the, one of the founders of my community, he was a priest, I met him in Rome. We were on a pilgrimage. There was four of us. And we were walking into the stadium uh, in Rome. It was, we were in the International Catholic Charismatic uh, Conference. And this priest here says, speaking English and Spanish. And so he introduced himself to us. Then we ended up separating because he didn't have a ticket. But later, we actually ended up in the same section of the stadium. I mean, this is a stadium with 50,000 people. So again, he would share about his community. We wouldn't meet him again. I wouldn't see him again maybe until a year or two later. And again, he would share about his community. And this time, the Lord was stirring something in my heart. And uh, I started discerning. And I, uh, I went through an interview process, but I knew that I wanted a deeper relationship with the Lord. I had my eyes fixed on Jesus, not on this holy priest that I had met. It's, it's easy. You, you meet somebody and then you're like, oh, I, you know, I want to be close to that person. But no, my eyes were fixed on Jesus. Amen? And so, sometimes when you enter into a community, a prayer group, uh, they'll, God will use certain people as, as instruments to bring you in. But again, you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. Here we have, we're, we're blessed with priests that are very anointed. So you have to remember to always keep your eyes on Jesus. They are there as instruments. But your eyes should always be on Jesus. So for one reason, they're moved, and you're like, oh, I'm not going there anymore. No, you're going because your eyes are fixed on Jesus. Sometimes in a group, there's somebody who's like, oh, they're looking at somebody, oh, that guy is cute, or that girl is cute. I'm there for them. And I think, no, 
Your eyes should be fixed on Jesus. Remember the first commandment, the Lord says, Thou shalt not have other gods besides me. So you should not be idolizing any other person. So tell the person next to you, fix your eyes always on Jesus. Amen. Okay, so we're going to point number six. Small Christian communities include prayer groups, Bible studies, lay associations, third order communities, study groups, Christian reading groups, men's groups, women's groups, share groups, and Bible lunch groups, etc. Some ministries are also a form of community. I took my discipleship class uh, with Father Francis many years ago in Spanish before Father Mark started his. And so he shared with us an example of what a prayer community should be like. And this is what I'm going to share with you tonight. First of all, you need someone to be responsible for the community. So you need to discern and ask the Holy Spirit who should be the leader. One time uh, when we were discerning for uh, a prayer group, we actually, we prayed and we wrote in a little paper for nobody can see the name of the person and we put it and then we, when we opened it, most, it was, it was, we prayed and it was that person that we had mostly, I think everybody picked the same person except one, <laughs> but everybody, uh, that's how we discerned for somebody to be a leader. Father Francis says, a size should be small from ten, seven to 10 people. He said, arrive on time. The first five minutes should be about welcoming and greeting and fellowship. Then the next 15 minutes, again, should be like praise and worship. And if we don't have somebody like Pauline, we can have a CD. We should pray, give thanks, and also pray to the Blessed Mother and invoke the Holy Spirit. The next 10 minutes, uh, it'd be about Lectio Divina. You can reflect on the scripture in silence. And then the next 10 minutes, you will share what the Lord is saying in the scripture. The next 20 minutes, he said, share your daily routine and share your journaling. And, he's, and then the, finally, the, the next 20 minutes, you review one of the topics of the class, like here in the discipleship class, someone from the group should review. And, um, and finally, you pray for one another, you lift up the petitions, you say in our Father, a Hail Mary, and a Glory Be, and give each other peace. The total time of all this should be around an hour and 30 minutes. You can do it once a week, twice, a month or, or once a month, whatever the Lord is calling you, you that's the way you can form a community in, in your house. Point number seven. Authentic community requires some form of prayer and depth of sharing. In my community, we are contemplatives of the Eucharist. We are encouraged to go daily to Mass. We go daily to adoration. I just, I was there, so I came over here. And we are also contemplatives of the cross. We go daily to the cross. We consecrate our lives to the Blessed Mother. As we begin our simple path to union with God, we do our total consecration. And daily we pray the rosary. And when we are in a community, we pray the rosary. That's the first thing we do. We ask and we pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit for our community and also upon the church. And we seek for the guidance of the Holy Spirit and actions and his gifts. And finally, we are obedient to the church, to the Catholic Church. So in a community, just to sum up, community should be Eucharistic, Holy Spirit-led, should be Marian, and should be obedient and faithful to the Catholic Church teachings and our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Amen? Amen. Okay.
Okay, point number eight. Christian community should be inclusive and members should be selfless. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be. So Father Mark says that here at the Catholic Charismatic Center, we are a funny bunch. <laughs> and what he means by that is that we come from all different backgrounds. It's beautiful when you see the sanctuary. It's just beautiful that everybody's from different places or in life. And, and it's, it's just beautiful. But what unites us is this amazing love that we have of, of God. And everybody's welcomed here. Now, if you decide, again, to go into a religious order or a covenant community, that is more a commitment to, of life. So there is a discernment process and there is an interview process that you go through in order to, to be part of a community like that. I can't just say, I'm going to be a nun one day and just get into a religious community. It doesn't work like that. Now, members should be selfless. This means that you have to let go of the ego. You have to let go of that attitude of me, myself, and I. If you are in a pity party, you've got to let go of that pity party, whatever, you think, whatever you're going through. You let go of that, and you think and you, about your brother and your sister, whoever you serve them, you intercede for them. Um, in the beginning, again, we, Father Mark had that quote from John Veneer. I didn't know who he was, so I investigated, and I asked Father Mark, who is he? And so he was the founder of a community called The Arch, and this community is for um, persons with disabilities and special needs, and, uh, and it's for those who care for them. So he, this community is found in 37 countries. It's a beautiful community. I highly recommend uh, you look it up, and Father Mark thinks he, he's going to be a saint one day, so pray for him. The other person that, that comes to mind also is Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And she said, do not try to go to heaven alone. He will almost certainly ask you the embarrassing question, where are your brothers and sisters? So tell the person next to you, let go of your ego and serve your brother and sister. Amen. Okay, we're finally to the last point, number nine. We cannot do it on our own. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, 1 through 4, 1, 2, 3. We see that Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the twelve and some women, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. So Jesus was not alone. Community provides a sense of protection, a belonging, of support. In my community, we meet every week, and uh, once a month, the women will meet together because there's issues that women need to talk about. And so we meet together, and the men meet together. And uh, once a month, I have an accompaniment. It's, more, it's also like an accountability, like with um, the spiritual mother of my community. And uh, I share how my life is going, what everything is, 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 you know, what the Lord is doing. And if I'm stuck in some area, then she helps me out, she guides me. So it's a beautiful community, and I'm very blessed, and I give thanks to God for that community that he called me to. My advice to you is to surround yourself with the saints in the making here on earth, people who will encourage you and build you up. Hebrews 10, 25, we should not stay away from our assembly. If you one day you feel discouraged, you don't want to go, don't stay away. Keep going. Keep coming here to the Catholic Charismatic Center or to wherever you are, whatever parish you are. Keep going to that prayer group, that ministry. Don't give up. If something happened, don't give up. You know, keep your eyes on the Lord. In the book Flame of Love, 
on January 1st, 1981. Our Lord told a Third Order Carmelite, Elizabeth Kindleman, we must intensify prayer, we must sacrifice for world peace and for the salvation of souls. We must go to the limit. Every parish must urgently form communities of prayer. Bless each other with the sign of the cross. So Mary Martha, can you come up here? Sure. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna bless the person in the sign, with the sign of the cross and tell them, let's go to heaven together. Let's go to heaven together. Amen. Let's go to heaven together. <laughs> Amen. That's